Hey YouTube, this is Southern Prepper One. And this is the day before Thanksgiving. So I hope you're uh, traveling safely or you're already at your location. I hope the uh, very bad financial situation doesn't detract from your holiday. I hope you can truly find things to be thankful for. Because overall we live in a great place. Yes, we got some serious problems. Problems are so severe. Uh, we keep looking for politicians. We keep looking for men to fix the problems. Now, granted, good men with good intentions, putting their trust in God, can definitely have wisdom to solve some of our problems. But as a country, we have gone down the path uh, that is bringing us to this point. Our total attitude towards what is supposed to be good and righteous, um, we call that bad. And bad things that are clearly bad, people say, no, that's okay to do. You be the deciding factor what's right and wrong. And I truly believe I don't have the right to decide what's right and wrong. There's definitely uh, a game plan that was ordained by God but nowadays, men and women have everything backwards. So we're trying to look for a political solution. We're trying to look for a man to solve our problems. Uh, no, it's not going to be, not going to happen. We as a country need to get on our faces, on our knees, and just put everything in God's hands. And until we do that, we're not going to solve any problems. Absolutely not. Especially with our current leadership on both sides of the aisle. Uh, they have not our interest at heart. 99.5% uh, of these guys and gals up there, they get bought and paid for very quickly. <laughs> they get blackmailed. So yes, I hope you find something to be thankful for. But I was at the bank and they had a sign there you know, when you're standing in line waiting to be served, and it was the new car uh, rates. And it, it shocked me. Um, it is 15.9% for a new car to finance a new car. That's a lot. 15.9. And that's if you got good credit. If your credit's not as good, uh, that's where it starts at and goes up. Refinancing was 6.19%. Then, a home equity loan. Home equity loan. They got you for six months. They give you a little teaser rate of 5.740%. 5.74% teaser rate. To me, that's outrageously high. Because if you can't afford to do it now, you surely can't afford to do it when you have to pay almost 6% interest. But that's only good for six months. Then after that, your interest rate is 8.580. That is incredibly high. And that's if you got good credit and you qualify for their lowest rate. And then they had some fine print there. I read something about this would be an initial draw of 60,000 out of 100,000. So if you have to sign your paperwork and they give you an initial draw of 60,000, are you paying interest on that? I'm not a banker, I don't know. Hopefully you can get a lot less if you need it. But those numbers are astonishing. Usually also right there, they have the mortgage rates, but they didn't have them. I'm wondering if they put the refinance rates there because a lot of people might be short on cash for the holidays. Uh, I know a lot of people are using credit cards. It's up unbelievable. And the amount of people getting laid off is just up, up and away. We are definitely going into a recession. And I'm not trying to depress you. I'm trying to motivate you right now today um, to cut every expense you can. Yes, cut the cable. If you got cable on right now and you're barely making it now, you don't know what six months is gonna bring. You don't know what two months is gonna bring. You need to cut it right now. Go to Roku, go to anything else that's free. You need to be playing 
hardball right now if your finances are itch you know sketchy and you're like huh some of you are past that point of sketchiness and you're in the actual hurting stages you are getting behind you're deciding what to pay every month I know I'm talking to you I I, I can tell that people are stressed to the max they go to the grocery store they can't buy what they want to buy heating oil up north so today is the day to make serious, serious changes. Don't go say, well, after the holidays, I got to buy these gifts for everybody because they expect it. Don't buy gifts for anybody. If you got some small kids in your life, yeah, take care of them. Make this the season special. Make sure they know what the season is. It's not gift giving. It's a birthday. And make sure they know why we're celebrating Christmas. But today is the day you gotta sit down with your spouse and say, you know what? We both got jobs right now, but we don't know what three months is gonna be. So tighten the belt now. If you don't have an emergency fund, start building up an emergency fund. A lot of people prep for zombies coming over the wire, you know, this and that crazy stuff. And I'm all for that, preparing for uh, not really zombies, and you know what I mean. I'm talking about crazy people doing crazy things because they don't have anything to sustain themselves. That's what I call zombies. Yeah, you need to prepare for troubled times, but right now we need to prepare for a major recession. The layoffs are getting worse and worse. We want to put you in a position where uh, if it does affect you, you have a little bit of a cushion. So look at your finances. What can you cut right now? Can you change your, your diet? I'm not saying don't eat properly. I'm saying, can you start eating more rice and beans? Stretching that pound of a hamburger, stretching that pound of chicken. You might say, I live in an environment where I could grow lettuce and kale and all kinds of greens. Right now, I could grow them. It just takes effort. Now is the time to say, hey, let's put some lettuce in the ground. Let's put whatever we can for your location. I don't have a crystal ball. But the reports I get on boots on the ground are showing things are progressively getting worse. And it does, doesn't get me excited to say that because a lot of preppers I talk to hear about, you know, oh, this is it. We're going to crash. We're going to burn. Then I can use my four ARs and my 10,000 rounds of ammo. Hopefully you don't get to that point. What you're gonna need is food. What you're gonna need is enough money to pay the electric bill. And then you're gonna to have to face the facts that, hey, they might cut my hours. I might keep my job, but I might go to 30 hours. I get lots and lots of reports of that. And then you gotta balance on the other side of all these openings. People can't find people to work. So, today's the day. Today is the day to sit down and say, all right, we're going to assume the economy is going to be worse in three months, six months, nine months. What can I do to position myself? Some of you are okay. Some of you have a, a, a little nest egg put back. You've controlled your spending through your life. You live below your means. So you're going to make it. You're going to be okay. But there's some, when they get an extra $100 in their pocket, whoa, whoa. Let's go to the movies. Uh, let me grab a steak here when you should be eating hamburger or chicken. That's what I'm talking about. Now, some of you are in a position where, you know, you could say and, and, and rightfully make a great defense that it's not my fault. It's just I had a job and it's getting phased out or we're getting cut at work. We need to start treating every dollar that comes into our pocket as a resource that's going to be very hard to replace in three months, six months, nine months. So value that dollar. Stretch that dollar. When you look at something you, you need, is it going to last? 
is it the best for my money? So I'm not here to, to scare you, but I'm telling you my boots on the ground reports, the economic indicators are pointing to serious, serious problems. It might not be zombies coming over your fence, but it could be maybe a zombie at three o'clock in the morning sneaking in and stealing your lawnmower out of your shed. So address that situation. You need a better secure lock and some lighting in the backyard. Probably more important than having an AR-15 and 5,000 rounds of ammo. You might need to upgrade the locks on the front door. You might need to, you know, worst case, you say, I live in an apartment, I can't do that. Why don't you get a chair that's really sturdy, and when you go to bed at night, put it in front of the door. Now granted, if you have a fire, it's gonna be harder to get out, but make sure you can get out in an emergency quickly. Start thinking of ways to save money. I know it's Thanksgiving tomorrow, and I'm thankful for a lot. I'm thankful for you as viewers. I'm thankful for this channel. And I'm starting to realize I was given this channel. This channel was directly influenced by God. No questions asked. I, I'm not a public person. He has given me the ability to talk. I'm a very shy person. So I have a platform. My philosophy before was I don't want to be rude to people. I don't want them to come here thinking, hey, this is a prepping channel. This is a survival channel. This is a homesteading channel. So I want to keep it related to that. No, I, I've, I've realized that I have a platform. I'm going to be judged by what I do with this platform. Do I tell people enough about Jesus Christ? Do I tell people there is a solution to your problems? And it's a free gift. If I don't, when I get to heaven, I will be judged. I will be asked, Dave, I gave you a YouTube channel. I gave you a lot of people watching your videos. Why don't you mention my name more? Why don't you tell people, hey, there's a free gift out here that will keep you out of hell if you just accept it. So my philosophy was, I don't wanna be rude to people. They come here for a purpose. People come here and they hear me talk about God and salvation and they don't like it, they'll leave. I hope they don't, I hope they listen, especially if they need to listen. So going into the new year, yeah, I'm still a prepping channel, 100%. But the most important prep you can do is knowing in your heart, if you died from a massive heart attack right now, that you would be in heaven. You would pass from this earth and be in glory. I have that insurance in my heart. It's not because Dave is such a good guy. Dave's a terrible guy. Dave was just willing to accept the gift, the gift of salvation. The only thing I had to do was accept it. It's not Dave has to do all these good works. Dave likes doing good things for people and helping people because that's what I'm commanded to do. Make sure people got food, take care of the widows, spread my message, love people, don't judge people. You know, there's a lot of people out there you see and say, oh yeah, you need government help. You must be lazy. It's not my job to do that. My job is, hey, someone's hungry, make sure they got enough food to eat. If you can instruct them to say, hey, you might need to do things better with your money, or maybe you need to get a skill, go back to school, take care of this, and then I don't have to give you a fish. I give you a fishing pole, go fish help yourself so tomorrow Thanksgiving there's a lot to be thankful for I'm happy and so happy to be alive at this time this is the time I'm needed in this world I was put here for a purpose so do your purpose do it as best you can thanks for watching